Hi and welcome to this new video of Deep Dark Ross series. In this video series I'm going to talk about topics that uh, or they might be well documented but maybe we need some examples or they are not documented or they are really important and they are not documented at all and we use it all the time and they are quite complex sometimes. So in this video I'm going to talk about uh, real time with ROS2. It will be a very very simple demo following the Pendulum ROS2 uh, real time demo and just to show you how to launch it and how it works um, very very basically. If you like the video please consider subscribing and uh, hit the like button and also leave in the comments what topic of uh, real time would you like to know about or some examples or some other topic of deep dark rush for the next videos and without further ado let's get started so in this in here you can see that as always i've launched a rush check i leave it in the video description and you'll be able to do the exact same thing that i'm doing here i've left some links for the original tutorials if you need more information or if you go want to go deeper. So the first thing is how do I set up uh, this, this project in, in ROS2? It's very simple. You just have to install ROS2 in your local computer and download the Git. In this case, I've just set, I've placed here some commands just in case you want to do it locally. And I'll explain why. Uh, but here in the ROS check, you have it already set up and compiled and ready to go. So the only thing that you have to do is open a, a web shell and here, there we go, did really simple. And here you go to the graphical tools and you just drag the window if it appeared strangely there. Okay, there you go. So here we have our pendulum which is a cart and it has attached a pendulum with a weight uh, that's it so this is simulated through code that I'll show you right now how it is done but essentially it's a workbench where you can test your uh, control algorithms and see how well it performs in real time yeah so uh, for example you can move it around and see how it performs the, the control. For example, let's execute this command. We go to web shell and we execute it here. Let me just do it a bit smaller and we'll put the graphical. There we go. Okay, so now let me execute this. Then it controls and go to position five. Fine. Then I can put it again to position zero. There we go. As you see, the, the control is really, really good. There we go. So let's have a look at the code, how this is done. So if we go to the, the code, we basically are using, if we are launching this pendulum bring launch, and it has it launches many things, but one of the things that are, is really important is the pendulum demo runner, which essentially is the, the simulation, but through code. That's why we are seeing it in our viz and there's no gazebo simulation there. So lo let's have a look in the code. If you go to pendulum driver, and you go to the pendulum driver CPP at the end, what we are executing is this, which um, in some several lines, what you're doing is basic physics calculations. That's it. It's just simulating physics. Nothing very fancy, but it's enough to ha be a workbench and that it doesn't have a very big impact in your system so that you can test your real-time algorithms. Hmm? Then another thing that we can do uh, is, for example, 
because this is a parameterized simulation, we can change the, the pendulum, pendulum length, for example. Let's do it, I don't know, like 10. Then we go here and we, uh, we compile. Then we load again. And there's nothing because I made it so long that may it may have fallen and the control didn't work. So let me change it to something a little less extreme. Let's put it, it was two, let's put it three, for example. Let's compile again. Let's launch it. There we go. So as you can see, it's a bit longer. Okay, and that's why it's moving more because now it's more difficult to control it. Well, it depends if it's too short, it will also be very difficult to control. So let me just move it somewhere, for example, there. There we go. For example, we can change also the gravity, the weight, loads of stuff. You can change everything here. This is in the, the pendulum bring up in the parameters. You just have to change it and you can move around. Also, you can change the noise levels just in case there's you want more uncertainty. Very, very nice um, demo. And the, the final thing that I wanted to show you is Okay, this is very nice, but what about the real time? So let me show. Um, so I've copied pasted basically the, the main parameters needed to configure this stuff. Essentially what we are trying to do, let me move myself here. You can launch the, the example setting a priority, priority in, the, in the node priorities in, in Linux, at least, processes is the lower, the, the higher priority it has. So zero means super priority, the, the first one. And then until the 139, which is lowest priority, users uh, priorities are around uh, 99 and 139, more or less. Uh, User priorities means that the user, so us, we only can set processes that have those priorities. If we wanted to go lower, we should execute this as a user that has a pseudo privileges. Otherwise, we won't be able to do it. And we can also set which process, CPU, we want to use, number four, number five, this kind of stuff. And then we can also lock the memory, the megabytes that we have of RAM that we want to use for this uh, application so that we always have this available for us. This is vital to have a real-time system. Otherwise, the real-time system will say, okay, I need 100 megabytes and I can't find them, so I can't execute my process, so I won't execute it on time. That's a thing. Okay, so I've posted here some some notes, but basically it's showing you this, which is okay. I want to do it in Rust DS, so I'm executing it, and what happens? It says couldn't set a scheduling priority and policy. Why? Because I'm setting priority of eighty. Eighty is 
inside the pseudo uh, priorities. And because I'm not pseudo in the system, it's impossible to do it. Then I say, okay, then let's put um, 100, which goes inside the user's uh, priorities. Okay, now it's saying that I can't reserve memory because I'm not pseudo. So the thing is, this locally, I'm showing you this because locally you could have these same problems because you have to set um, your user so that it can be able to do that. I've, I've set here um, a link to um, um, tutorial where it explains how to set this up. But in this case, in the system, is it's working pretty well because it's a system for users all over the world that we don't know what they can do and how they can break their own system. So uh, they can't they can't do real time in ROS2 just because um, you have to have a very good control of the memory and the, the priorities of the processes. And that's why it's, it's giving these errors. But this is the way that you would configure a system to run in real time for ROS2. And that's it. So remember that we are having our fourth ROS Developers Day and it's coming up really nicely uh, and it's on the 19th of June. So if you haven't booked those tickets, book them now. It, we have very cool tutorials and speeches of people that are the best of the best on robotics development in ROS. So please consider checking it out and that's it. Thanks and see you in the next video. Peace.